Here we go. Okay, so this is going to be a gusher pad. Someone was asking about um, like how they could make one. So I'm going to show you how I make mine. Uh, this is the standard core. On the back here, this is the um, Zorb Silver Surged. Um, this is a number three, so it's just one layer of the Zorb. Um, there's a layer of uh, bamboo fleece. There we go. Heavy organic bamboo fleece. Um, and then there's this third layer for the gusher, and that's just uh, red flannel. I use red because it looks kind of bloody, and we're going to cut slits into this cover. So um, it's mostly for fun. I choose the red. There are all kinds of things you can do, but flannel is a really good option. It's inexpensive. It's thin. It is absorbent. Um, and then when you make your cuts, um, you're going to cut through the top layer. You're going to cut through the flannel, but then you're going to leave the other core layers um, intact. In this case, it's... Um, again, the organic, the, the bamboo fleece, and for the gushers, I actually, um, I dye the bamboo fleece, I don't you, you can tell right in there in the middle, I have a white layer on the bottom, that's the Zorb Silver, and then the heavy organic bamboo fleece that's been dyed is kind of a mm, purplish in between, and then the red flannel. So, um, I attach this, again, the flannel side toward the top fabric, and um, this is the 14 inch pad that I make. Um, which is pretty darn big. Uh, the next size down I make is the, the 10, so the 14 is really like a, an overnight. Um, so line up your core, get everything just right. Uh, and I, I pin the core, and again, there's no waterproof or anything, so the core is fine to be using pins. This just helps keep it in place, and I'm gonna stitch all the way along the perimeter um, from the top through, and this is with all cotton thread. Um, since this, even all along the perimeter, um, it's all going to be touching skin, so I want to make sure that we're only using cotton thread in there. Make sure the lighting looks okay. So my straight stitch machine is my favorite thing in the world. And that go. Because it's thick, I'm going to lighten up the tension a little bit. Uh, a two millimeter stitch length, um, because this machine is pretty darn fast, um, the two millimeter is pretty quick. On my other machines that aren't as fast, um, a two millimeter stitch would take a long time, so it just doesn't move as fast. But the shorter stitch length means more stitches, means more interlocks in the fabric, means it's going to be stronger overall. So, let's start out here, a little back stitch, and just like with the other pads, including like the liner that I have the other video on, you keep it pretty close to the edge of the core. Um, the, if you get too far away from the edge of the core, then the whole core, like in the, during when it's washing and drying, it can curl back around and kind of create lumps. So you want to be close, it prevents that. Uh, some will use a three-step zigzag that goes all the way along and that helps really keep it flat. Um, this is just a straight stitch. So you want to keep it close to the edge, but not so close that it, it doesn't have enough fabric to grab. Try to keep my hands out of the way. And then, because it's an abrupt turn, I'm not going to try and do a curvy stitch around that. And lift the presser foot and turn. All right, so we've got the core fully attached, um, or, or rather its perimeter. Um, that's complete, but now, because this is a, a gusher pad, um, and the other ones I do uh, a, a wavy stitch. It's um, just quilting in the middle. It keeps the core firmly attached to the topper, so there's not like this you know, gap between them. 
um, and it helps kind of wick anything through. And then because it's wavy, it helps uh, fluid move into the core before it has a chance to run somewhere else. In this case, for the, the gusher pad, I have a little template that I use. All right, so this is my template. Um, you can do these in a couple different ways. And there we go. Here's a Frixion. Um, it's an erasable marker, but it also goes away with heat and wash. Um, and I try to use colors that match the, uh, the fabrics, just in case anything doesn't wash away completely. So I do this, um, it's a slight angle, and I usually go from the you know, top right to the lower left. Um, there are lots of other patterns, a lot of them just go straight across. And one of the things that you want to consider is, you know, when the fluid is, is, is going along, how much surface area do you want to create? And that's where, why I do the diagonal. So if it's just a straight across, it's a little bit more narrow. This way it gets a little bit more uh, length and, and access to the core. Um, this right here is about three quarters of an inch between each one. So I just line it up pretty close to the top and bottom. And you really don't need anything at the top and bottom. So there we go. And I use little hand weights, little barbells, as my pattern weights. And they are pretty fantastic. So just a quick mark. You don't need a lot. You'll be able to see it pretty well when you go to stitch it. So, and I think you can probably see those lines. Uh, yeah, so it's really light. Um, you can use Taylor's chalk or something like that. Um, this is where the stitches are going to go. If it's washable, then it'll wash right out. <clears throat> Shouldn't be a problem. Now, for the gusher, um, what we're going to do is we're going to stitch. And then we're going to make a cut in the fabric, the top fabric, and that flannel layer in between the stitching. So, and to keep it from puckering too much, I do lighten up on the foot pressure. And I start about in the middle. Just maybe one stitch, and then I, well, for this stuff, I also go with a, a much longer stitch length, so like three and a half millimeters. Um, because this is more quilting, and I don't want it to compress the core too much. So if you go with a really short stitch length and um, not in, or too much tension on your thread, anything like that, then you're going to start compressing the core. And you don't want to do that because then the core can't hold as much fluid. So, and you don't need to go all the way. So I, I do a nice whole bunch of back stitch, not quite to that outer perimeter stitch, and then back on over and back again and I go every other and then I'll come back so that just less puckering and less movement of the overall fabric
and that one's small enough on yeah, I'll do that one time. I won't cut on the other side of it, but I'll do this stitch in. Now, one of the other things that I, I like to do here is add an additional layer of quilting stitches, so it's going to be extra long at all, like five millimeters for this. But it's just in case there's a side leak, especially for like a 14 inch one, it's going to be maybe an overnight and you're sleeping on your side. So some extra stitching here. So that if something does, like, you know, this fluid moving this direction, it hits the stitching and it helps to wick it into the core before it hits this perimeter where there's just no more core after that point. So it's just in this center area. I'm going to come in just a little bit above the wing, and it's about a quarter of an inch from that outside stitching. And again, the really long stitch length. Just past the other end of the wing. So, there you have it. You've got all your spaces. Um, I'm going to trim all these threads. Now, this does not need to be all that perfect. i got to find my thread trimmers here. There we go. Um, because it's going to fray, and the fraying is an important part of the gusher pad. But, and again, this is all cotton thread, which is also nice. Uh, polyester thread is not going to wick, um, but and, and maybe it's not going to be irritating, but I still think it's best to use cotton thread, especially a high quality thread like the Guterman. And this is what you call, it's, it's called a bird's nest, where the extra little length of threads are get, end up getting tucked in underneath the stitches, so I try to pull those out, snip them as well. Okay. Um, and this machine, this is the, the Brother PQ 1500 SL, so 1500 stitch per minute uh, machine. It has a, a cutter inside. Now, Two of my other machines also have an automatic thread cutter. Just hit the button and it does it. Um, industrial machines, I know like the Jack, it's on my wish list. The Jack um, F series, I think the F6 is F5 and F6. But they also have a, a, a thread cutter that's pretty darn small. I think it's uh, maybe three or four millimeters. This thread here from, from the brother is pretty short, short enough that I never have to trim it off most things. Um, on the surface here, Anything like that, I might get some that are worth trimming, but you know, three eighths of an inch is not that bad. Um, okay, so I'm not gonna cut this until I'm actually finished making the whole thing. It's just easier to turn when this is uh, not cut open. So we'll attach the flannel now. Um, I mentioned this in the other video. This is why one of the reasons that I use cotton uh, flannel as the backer. First of all, it's cotton instead of synthetics. Um, things like uh, fleece, micro fleece, polar fleece, wind pro. Wind pro is like the most expensive. You use it for, it's like a waterproof ing um, thing for jackets. Uh, same with soft shell fleece. Those are all designed for jackets. Um, they're all synthetic. And the plastic itself, when it's in the wash at least, it will release microplastics by design. It's just microfibers of uh, polyester. But, so they're all plastics. I try not to use plastic, so I want cotton. The second thing here is that this is going to be kind of grippy. The natural fibers are, you know, there's enough of these little natural loose fibers sticking out of the flannel that'll help grip other fabric, like in this case, the topper, but also in your underwear, so it keeps it from shifting around. Um, so here, I'm just going to lay down this topper fabric against it, rub it in a little bit, and that is enough. It will stay in place. They're gonna, they're just fine. You don't need pins or anything else here. So more advantages to the flannel. I'm always gonna you know, say good things about that. Oh. 
we have to adjust my stitch length down from that five. So back down to our two stitch length. We want this to be a nice, strong point, especially right here where we're going to be turning. It's a thick core. You want a big enough turn hole that you can do it, but not so big that it's going to be difficult to top stitch and close. One of the changes that I made to this sewing line is the smoother corners. And the smooth corners just have, uh, there's, there's less stress on the fabrics on the seam. Um, when you turn it out and then you top stitch, that gradual smooth is just better for the fabric. So it makes it a little bit more durable too. stitch here at the end for the turning hole because I need that really well reinforced so that nothing pops open when I go to turn it. All right, so, uh, oh, no, we're not ready to cut yet. Sorry, I bumped the camera. Okay, so PUL. Um, this PUL I get from Wazoodle Fabrics. Regular PUL looks like this. Um, it's a one mil layer of polyurethane, and then this is a polyester woven. This is the normal stuff. This is used in you know, diapers and everything else. But normally, this this side right here, this is the uh, you know the soft side. That's the shiny side, waterproof side. This is a, a thicker material and it's durable, so this can be the outer side of the garment. Because my PUL is always a hidden layer, I get the lightweight. So it's the same thickness. It's one mil polyurethane, the waterproofer is the same thickness, but it's with this really lightweight, lightweight polyester um, knit fabric. And so it has all the same properties, but it's just much thinner because it's hidden. It doesn't, it doesn't need to be a, a wear layer. It doesn't need to be tough. It just needs to, you know, support the, the waterproofing membrane. So it's lightweight, a little bit less bulk, and you can even see it's kind of, you know, uh, semi-translucent. Um, opaque something. <laughs> you can kind of see through it to the core. Um, yeah, so that's what I use as the hidden waterproofer. Um, it is really slippery, so you do have to attach it. You don't want to use pins. It would be fine if you use pins, you know, and you put them through on the outside of the stitch, because, you know, once it hits the stitch, there's a hole in there anyway, so you could pin on the outside of where you're going to be stitching. That would be fine. Um, since I have these jumbo clips. I'm going to use them. And at this point, the stitching is not necessarily it's not really important. It's just, I mean, everything has been sewn. Um, you could sew this uh, at the same time that you're attaching it to flannel or something else. I do this. Um, it gives me a, a second line of stitching all the way around, so it means it's going to be a bit more durable. Um, and then it's a whole lot easier to just, you know, stitch this way. Um, okay. And you just want, so the clips are going to hold it in place, but also make sure that you, you know, thing is folding over it and then you're not stitching through it because I like to turn it over. So now I follow this outside line. Um, I need to crank that back down and my presser foot. This machine also has a pin feed, so in the back here there's, you know, with each line, a little pin rises up and helps pull the fabric. That's especially good when I'm working with the PUL. Um, a lot of uh, sewists do not like sewing PUL because it's, it's this weird slippery fabric. But this sewing machine does a really good job keeping everything together with that pin feed. So again, uh, two millimeter stitch length. Um, I've already done my, you know, my uh, back stitching at the turning hole, so I don't need to do a lot of support. This is really just locking it up. I try to maintain the stitch just, I'm going to grab that table, alright, so there's my work surface, can you still see, yeah, 
Um, so I try to maintain this stitch just on the outside of that original stitch. Um, so it, it just takes a little bit more support in the stitches. It'll never be seen. Make things a little bit more durable. Got that work, that, that uh, extension put away. So now I'm just gonna go through, trim the big parts of the excess away. And again, you wanna try and aim for about, you know, a quarter of an inch to three eighths of an inch sending him allowance. Um, you don't wanna get too close. If you cut too much away, and there's nothing keeping the stitching from just kind of fraying the end and losing uh, your connection there. And you definitely do not want that. Okay, so there's my turn hole. Leave extra length of the turn hole so that when you turn it in, it's just easier to get it all to go in. And then stitch through to close up that turn hole. Pinking shears, I get the easy action pinking shears because, um, especially with pinking shears, they like to kind of gum up a little bit and then you have to use your your hand to actively open, like to push the scissors open. So I like this, it just helps, um, especially when you're doing a lot of, of uh, pads or you know pink, doing pinking things a lot, use these. I also have this guy, um, so it's just a rotary cutter with the pinking shear rotor, but don't, you know, it's, the pinking is not that sharp, but, um, but this, this messes up my cutting mat, like it, it really digs into the cutting mat, um, so I tend not to end up using it as nice as it is. Um, so, most important things to trim here, oh, look what I did. So that folded over, so, gotta come through, and again, this is one of the nice things, I mean, not that you should make this mistake a lot, uh, um, and I don't make it a lot, but it, it, this is not my first time. Um, so we're going to remove this, but because this, again, I, it was a second row of stitching that I did for the PUL, it's really not that big a deal. It's not going to hurt the integrity of anything. So I'm just going to come through, open it on up, and then some fresh stitching to make sure it's all back in place.
29 minutes. Okay. So the most important places to trim are at these corners. So you want that pretty close. I like to use the pinking shears, especially on these, so it reduces bulk. Um, but pinking, it reduces, you know, the, the fraying of these fabrics because of those peaks and valleys. So it's unlikely to fray, so it's, it's uh, a bit safer to use on these outside corners while getting it pretty close to your stitches. Um, and it helps reduce bulk. So anywhere that you have that, and in general, if you, if you uh, use pinking shears or the rotary thing, you can um, use less of a seam allowance. The seam allowance, part, you know, it partly reduces um, the threads from or the, the fabric from fraying. And as long as the fabric does not fray, the stitches will be kept here instead of being able to shift out. And so, using the pinking shears, just it reduces the bulk by reducing the amount of fabric that you have to leave on. Get nice and close in the outside corner, which will become, no, those will be, they will be outside corners the whole time. Now these inside corners, uh, when you turn this now, because this is kind of like this gradual, it, it's not going to pull as much, but when this gets turned inside out, it's going to be yanking on that. So we're just going to relieve that. And with the slower one, I'm going to go twice. Down here, this is enough, because I've got that turn hole here. I really want it right there. Okay, and some of these outside are just not quite tight enough, so a little more, more on that one. Okay, there we go. So, now it's time to turn. So I go all the way to the end, grab the furthest point, tuck it in, and bring it back to the turn hole. Grab that and then there we go. Okay. Turn. Use this cooking chopstick. It's a very long chopstick. I think it's like 16 inches. Uh, on Amazon it's like $6.99. Um, I like using this to turn because it gets all the way in there. I've got all this leverage. I can like set it in my lap if I need to. So I can use two hands. And sometimes I'll just like, sit on the couch watching a movie, turning pads. And then this is nice because you can set it in your lap, watch the movie, feel what you're doing. Uh, be very gentle. You want it to press the seam out, but you don't want it to uh, poke through the material. So like the flannel. Um, you can definitely poke a chopstick through the flannel. And make sure you turn out the wing. And not just on the points, but it also helps to uh, kind of stretch out all along the seam. And I keep a little spray bottle of water. So I can wet my fingers and it just makes it easier to grab and roll out anything in here that needs to.
and then a little water on your fingers also helps with the turning hole to kind of tuck that in. There we go. All right. And when I top stitch, I always start at that turn hole about halfway through it. And stitch half a quarter of an inch away, so it's really just the edge of this presser foot. Top stitch is one that is actually visible, so take your time. Try and keep it real consistent along the edge. Um, you want it pretty close to the edge because you want it to be attaching the outer layer, outer layer, and then those inside layers that we have in there in that French seam. If it grabs it all, stitches it together, then it's going to be much more durable. Again, there's those threads that uh, the machine kicks out. I don't know how well you can see them. Snip those off. Um, so there's two steps that I have left. Uh, one, I'm going to stitch hearts into this. Uh, this is a number. Looks like a number three. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so this is the number three gusher. Um, actually, so I'm, I'm not going to film the uh, the hearts. So I'm going to put three hearts right here. And then it's going to get um, a stud snap over here and two snaps over here. Um, but what I will show you, maybe the most important part of a gusher, so I should definitely do it, um, is cutting these slits. Now, these are the scissors that I use. Um, they're a seam ripper scissor from Fiskars. Um, this particular one is super, super pointy. Really sharp, but really pointy. So, when I come in, I can just kind of poke that in like a seam ripper and just start cutting. And this is, you know, it looks terrible cutting right through the top of the brand new pad, but that's appropriate. And then I want to cut through that second layer, the flannel. And I don't cut through the whole thing yet. And then I flip them over and this side is nice and round and dull. So it's definitely not going to go through that, that next layer. And then I can get it, you know, right in there to that edge and right in there so there's that the dyed bamboo um heavy organic bamboo fleece um that i dye at home because um the dyed versions all have spandex and so i don't want spandex uh anything that's you know an unnatural fiber in there the only thing that isn't a natural fiber is that that pul waterproof layer so everything else is a natural fiber and can break down so i dye the have your organic bamboo fleece myself um, and then you have this layer of flannel and finally the layer of the cotton topper um, this is what it looks like when you freshly do this um, i will wash and dry these uh, twice um, I normally most pads I, I i will always do a, a final wash and dry but for the the gusher pads i do it twice to really get that fray going it'll continue fraying you know with every wash um, get you know nice and soft so when you get them you know use them or wash them before you uh, use them It'll, it'll fray just a little bit more. Um, it won't come apart. The stitching and everything else is going to keep everything just fine. Um, so they're not falling apart at all. This is just how you make sure that, um, you know, it, it will, it, it, you know, if there, you do have a gush, it'll go straight. And you'll notice a difference if you do like a hot water test for a taste, tablespoon of hot water. It'll go to the core of the gusher much faster than it will on really any other pad. So that's the gusher pad. Um, again, I'll do this for all of them. Um, I do offer the option for my Etsy shop 
If you don't want all of them cut right away, then I can do just, you know, so many of them. Or maybe I can start all of them with just the start. So that if you want to expand, you can, you know, get a pair of scissors in there. So maybe I can do that. So it's just this tiny little start, and then you can customize, you know, where you want your, which, which panels you want um, opened up. Um, yeah, so. I decided to go ahead and record a little bit more here, now that I've cut all of the uh, spaces, just so you can see it before it goes to the wash. Um, again, you got that, the core layer here. Um, you don't want to cut through this ever because the, on the other side of that is the Zorb. And Zorb is a super, super absorbent material. Um, and if you get it too close to your skin, it's just going to draw way too much moisture out. Um, so the, the bamboo, the heavy organic, or heavy organic bamboo fleece is something that you want to keep there. Um, it's super absorbent, but it also means that um, the Zorb doesn't get too close to your skin and dry things out or irritate anything. So there they are. Again, this is how it looks. This is how it normally looks on most uh, sellers, so, you know, shops and everything, but it may, it looks very, very different after it's been washed and dried a couple times.